Hello friends, welcome back. This is Rajnesh and this session is going to be about the name server and the name resolutions. Have you ever wondered when we try to open a website google.com what actually happens? The first thing that happens is it tries to convert the name google.com or google.co.in into the IP address. If we talk about the networking equipments, their identity is corresponding to their IP addresses. For example, if I talk about this machine, it has an IP address 192.168.1.205. So whenever I send any kind of data to it, it receives the data. So if we talk about the network, it's a collection of network devices. Each device has a unique IP address assigned to it. So it's very difficult for anyone to remind of IP address of the machines on which he works. For example, if we talk about our environment, I have around 10 machines and I cannot remind of the IP address corresponding to every machine. That is why I have marked them in a bracket. So what should be used? There is a service which is name service or bind or DNS server which is used to resolve the name into IP addresses and IP address into name. There are basically two kinds of resolutions. One is forward lookup which converts the name into IP address and reverse lookup which converts IP address into the name okay so let me try to find out what is the IP address corresponding to yahoo.com right now the thing is that there is no NS lookup file no NS lookup binary present on the server so I cannot resolve anything if we talk about this machine from which I tried to open google.com it's a Windows machine and I have specified DNS servers I'll show you network connections and here in the properties you can see that I'm using these DNS servers to resolve google.com okay let's come on to this Linux machine NSLOOKUP command was not present so let me try to find out which is the package corresponding to it there is one command repo query that is not present so yum install yum utils yum utils is a set of or a collection of binary files that can operate or fetch out the details directly from the yum repositories for example if I am running repo query it is going to query the details from a yum repository so repo query minus f user bin ns lookup so what this command did is it fetched out the details from the repositories So I have only one repository which is yum repo. So repo query fetched the repository infra repo and scanned it for the presence of the file user bin NS lookup. And finally it found that there is a package bind utils that has a file user bin lookup present in it. So let me install it. And now I can see that I have NSLOOKUP command in it. Now if I try to resolve yahoo.com, it resolves to an IP address. Actually to multiple A records because it has multiple A records associated with it. And so finally, if we know the IP address, we can interact with that server and utilize the services of that server. 
now what happens okay this is known as forward lookup the name into IP addresses the other part could be from IP address to name which is known as a reverse lookup so here if I type the command nslookup IP address it fetched out and show me the details or the name of the server corresponding to it is ir1.fp this is actually the name that Yahoo has assigned to the server which is corresponding to this IP address so this is an example of reverse lookup okay let us consider a scenario in which I want to host my site on some server so or network tools this is actually a website that I generally use to find out the details of a website or details of a domain NSLOOKUP can be used inside it DIG can be used to fetch out the details and there is one which is who is who is displays us the details of a particular domain for example if we talk about yahoo.com this domain is registered to some company and here you can see the details uh, who is version and if we talk about yahoo.com domain names in so internic.net is the one that registers these domains and okay I didn't see the desired details inside it okay let's see for a domain gmail.com let's go to internet.net and try to fetch out the details of the domain okay so as soon as I entered the details about Gmail I can see the details the name of the domain is gmail.com and registrar is this one and these are the name servers the four name servers corresponding to Google so if I am trying to resolve gmail.com what actually is happening is it is trying to fetch the details from the forwarding or the cache name server and the cache in M server in case it doesn't have an entry it tries to fetch out the details from the name servers corresponding to Gmail so this has four name servers which are responsible for the resolution in case our domain is not registered internet will not be able to determine which is the name server corresponding to this domain and hence the resolution will not happen so the first thing in case you are planning to register your domain or register a website or open a website the first thing that you need to do is register your domain with your complete details where you specify your name servers that will be used for the resolution so these are the Google's name servers now let's try to resolve nslookup gmail.com here you can see that gmail has been resolved to the name servers and the difference N now if I do the resolution gmail.com it tries to make 
use of the following DNS servers etcresolve.conf is a file which consists of the name server that this machine is going to use to resolve any name if I just type nslookup gmail.com it says non authoritative answer means the DNS server that I used provide me a non authoritative answer that is it is not authoritative name server for gmail if we talk about the resolution gmail.com from name server ns1.google.com so it is authoritative so it didn't display over here this is authoritative answer because ns1.google.com or ns2.google.com are actually the authoritative name servers for Gmail okay so this is how forward lookup and reverse lookup works now there are different kind of name servers if we talk about Linux generally we use bind as a DNS server so the DNS server can either act as a caching DNS server for example I talk about my DNS server that this client is using these are two 192.168.1.1 1 .1. this is actually my router which doesn't have any authoritative name server inside it so effectively it is acting as a caching name server whenever I am trying to resolve any name in case it has it in cache it will provide me the answer in case it doesn't have it it will try to fetch from the internet and save it in its cache and provide me the output so next time I am trying to resolve the same domain it is going to get resolved from the cache of my DNS server 192.168.1.1 forwarding name server whenever I am trying to resolve anything from this DNS server that it doesn't know so what actually it does is it forwards a request to multiple name servers that I will specify in it and will provide me the desired output so forwarding means the request sent to this name server will be forwarded to multiple or any uh, the DNS servers are, that I have specified and the result will be displayed back to me master name server if you are talking about authoritative name server either it could work as an uh, a master name server or a slave name server master name server actually has the DNS records inside it slave name server fetches the names or the zones from the master name server so both master and slave name servers are actually the authoritative name servers okay this is a brief introduction of how uh, the name server works now we'll be using this machine to make it as a DNS server